Okay, something already on. Okay, let's wait for the Zoom to connect with the Facebook Live and we'll do a quick check to see if we are live. David, are we live? Seems to be. Seems to be. All right. Yes, wow. Live Yay, we are finally live. Yes, yes. Okay. Hi, parents. This is Coach John from Learning Out of the Boss. And thank you so much for spending this morning with us. And it's almost lunchtime. Yeah. So just before you have an important uh, meal, now we have a very important person. And his name is David Chan. And he is the principal consultant for Adafic Leadership Consulting Private Limited. Hello, David. Hi. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, it's good to have you. And I can see um, this is the first time that I met you and you are such a radiant person, high energy. And I can see that you slept very well as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that helps definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So today we are going to talk about relationships at home, 24 slash 7, strain versus strengthen, which also tells me that today we are going to discuss about your relationship with a child and how you can use some simple tips to better strengthen it. So David, before we go into the midst of the slides, and I'm sure that you have lots of experience to share with us, could you share with us some background story uh, on how you started off this and actually what sparked off the idea to do what you're doing today? Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm doing today uh, is parenting and it didn't start off that way because I started off very much as a youth trainer. So the the thing was, I, I was in a leading consultancy. We did trainings in a lot of schools. Basically, uh, to schools, I'm a vendor. We provide all kinds of uh, learning solutions and we interact with a lot of them. So uh, till date, I think about 52,000. Yeah, wow. I spent at least three hours with them and either through a workshop or a three-day program. And we realized after a while, uh, we don't know quite what happens after we, we kind of like they go through our hands right we don't know what kind of impact we have so we went downstream we went to the polytechnics we went to tertiary institutions where we did uh, career modules to prepare them for work life and as we did i realized that uh okay by that time their value systems are quite there already like as in it's quite solidified and it's not so easy to influence and if you want to do anything, then we realize, why don't we go back upstream? So we went back upstream to primary school. We realized, ah, there are young minds that can be further influenced. We can build foundations of values there. And then we realized, wait a minute, why don't we go further upstream? So we went back to preschool and then we met with the teachers and the parents and it was all good. Then we realized the source of it, parenting. So then I <laughs> that myself come back here and mm -hmm. influence the parents and support them where they want support because i think that each child is different each parent child relationship is also different but we need to have enough tools uh, for everyone's disposal uh, so to speak so that they are equipped mm -hmm. so that's how i got here yeah so sounds really, really interesting so when you're traveling from uh downstream to upstream what are some of the challenges as well as uh as problems that you face when working with different categories of clients Okay, so the interesting thing is I deal with a huge range uh, in terms of age, right? The oldest mm -hmm. participant I've ever trained in my life is 70 years old. Uh. So mm -hmm. I do corporate training as well. And I realized that corporate training, while the money is probably a bit better, mm -hmm. um, the influence that you can leave with them is quite limited because their value systems are quite fixed. So we can teach skills. Mm -hmm. But the influence values is a bit different. Um, it's, a, it's quite different. Uh. They are quite fixated where they are. It takes a lot to change uh, mm -hmm. if there's like circumstances in life that gets them to think then that will be that change but when it's much younger when people are much younger that is where they are more malleable so to speak and mm -hmm. that's where i find more fulfillment i realize and speaking to parents you're helping two generations you're helping the parents and you're helping the children so it's double impact so to speak mm -hmm. so if we can get that uh, going uh, i think that will be quite a, a good good thing yeah Awesome. And you will have some um, strategies that you can help parents. And I remember you shared that you have some slides to, sh to share with us. Yes. So I will share some information. 
uh, I got in touch with this information because of uh, basically a frustrated parent. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A frustrated parent who was actually my business partner. So mm -hmm. my business partner, like me, training consultant, we are certified in a lot of things. Uh, and she was finding a tool to find out how to help her younger daughter. So she had an elder son. The son was just like her carbon copy in terms mm -hmm. of everything, personality, temperament, a lot of behaviors like, oh, just like, but when the younger one came out, suddenly like, this is a different creature, a different animal. Don't know a what creature. to do with her. You know? <laughs> and worse off, right, they, they were religious people. And then this mm. younger child, right, uh, kept lying to get her way. Like mm. she would just, wow, she's very good at spinning stories. And like, of course, I was thinking, wow, then she will do very good sales next time. But, but mm -hmm. that's not the right way to think. Uh, <laughs> but the, the point was that she, she couldn't handle this younger daughter. And she tried to find everything, but finally she found this tool, right? That was very helpful for parents, and it gave her that, that assurance because you you can't. I mean, we can't uh, we can't get past her training, uh, As in, if something doesn't work, she'll know. She's a consultant anyway. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this thing works, and then she started introducing it to me, where I realized that at that time I was dating my wife, my ex girlfriend, mm -hmm. with my mm -hmm. wife. Um, and it worked as well. It helped us in our relationship. So I know that this is a tool that works personally mm. for people around me. And that's how I got in touch with all this. Wonderful. So, yes. I you can do the share screen, screen now. Share a little bit. Okay. Yes, 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 please. So let me just... So for parents who are watching this right now, or you're watching the replay, Feel free to ask any question by commenting in the comment box so that we can take it on. Okay, so <clears throat> parents, thank you for being here. I am so glad that you are here. It tells me that you care. It tells me that you are trying and I really hope that whatever is here today would support you in your journey so that your child gets the help he or she needs. But more importantly, you get that help because I'm here to equip parents. So I think we have seen this video somewhere before. Basically, it's about uh, this guy driving, right? And then halfway, he would just open the car door and throw the kids out. That was what uh, pe people were laughing about during HBL and, and home-based learning and all that. So I'm going to skip that. Here is an activity to stress you out before I give you and feed you all the information. So if you would notice, there's a bunch of numbers. Can I get you now? And I'll give you 20 seconds as much as you can, right? Find out in sequence, in ascending order. So you have to go one, two, three, four, five and search out the numbers. You cannot skip numbers, okay? So you have 20 seconds and let's go. This is probably the most stressful part for today. Okay, let me try also. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I can feel that my heart is beating faster. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> I think once I reach eight, uh, I think, uh, I feel like giving up already. Three, two, one. Ah, Stop. I'm at 14. Okay, here, here's the deal. Uh. I'm going to repeat this again, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something. I'm going to draw two lines. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get you to look from for four numbers. The first four numbers. And I want you to draw a line with your finger from one to two to three to four. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you that there is a pattern. Okay, so this is the first time that uh, I can try annotation. So if I draw something on our slide, will they be able to see it? I guess so. You can try. Okay, so I'll represent the parents. And sorry again, I'm not a very one good two, list listener. <laughs> one to two, two to three, and three to four. One, two, two. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Two, th three. Okay. And two, four. Oh, it's a Z. So with that, let's try and see if we can get higher productivity in the next round. Ready? Mm -hmm. So I'll give us 18 seconds instead because we cheated a little, right? Ready? Okay. Go. Do the same thing again. Start from one. Start from one again. Okay. And I thought that this interview is you do the talking, I listen. How come I'm doing the work? <laughs> I prefer for people to work hard. <laughs> uh, now I feel very stressed. Okay. okay, is this what you want, teacher? Can. 
and you got to go faster. Okay, stop. So for those of you who are using your fingers to draw, you probably achieved a faster productivity because you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you found that there is a pattern. Mm -hmm. The point is that the pattern does things to us and may help us emotionally as well. So if you had seen the pattern, you went, oh, okay, so you just keep drawing a Z, la. you keep going back to the Z figure, you'll find that every other number goes in that sequence. So five would begin in the first quadrant, six would be in the next quadrant, seven in the Z formation. Mm -hmm. And then you will find that it's easier to spot. And it probably, hopefully, you may feel less stressed, you may feel less pressured, you may enjoy the process better, and you may be interested in doing more of that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, that tool that I give you today, which amongst many tools you receive in your lifetime, uh, are those that help in that stress relief, uh, confidence, and seeing a pattern that is uh, it's easy to communicate to other people as well. So I hope that parents, whatever you learn, you can communicate and transfer that information to others so that they benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, nah. uh, okay. okay, clear, that's it. Okay. The goal today, uh, is understanding and not labeling. We're going to talk about personality, so there's going to be a lot of uh, pseudo boxing up and, and saying he's a type A, type B, type C, that kind of thing. Hopefully, it relieves stress. It, uh, uh, sorry, the spelling, uh, relieve, relieve stress, it reduce mm -hmm. anxiety, and mm -hmm. it promotes a focus on solutions. So you can think about what to do with your child and how to help him or her. It also allows for strategic relationship building because we spend a lot of effort, but sometimes when we put in a lot of effort and it doesn't come back, right, we feel very discouraged. Like, why am I doing so much? Then we tell the kid, what you want? Then the kid can answer us, <laughs> right? But it encourages exploring and conversation, which is what we hope for. So I mentioned a bit on that just now, how it all began was a frustrated parent, which was my business partner, sharing some information. Then I went for a workshop uh, by this guy who basically came out with all these materials and I'm mm -hmm. just a happy recipient of that. Uh, I'll share with you a bit more about him later. Mm -hmm. And there was this post workshop. After the workshop, usually people, any good trainer will say, okay, what are your good takeaways? You know, what are your top three things that you learned today? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like closing, uh, standard closing for any workshop. Mm -hmm. But one by one, around me, right, I'm one of the participants then, people started breaking down. They started oh. crying and they started mm -hmm. sharing like, I finally understand why I'm frustrating my wife. I'm like, where did that come from? We were talking about information of personality, right? How uh -huh. did the person link and apply it? Then the same thing happened. A, a few more marriage stories came out. Uh, then one parenting issue came out and then they were like close to tears, you know. Then I, I felt very stressed because I, I didn't feel very emotional about the whole training. So I just like, uh, I think this was useful because I think I resolved a quarrel with my girlfriend. Mm. Then they in between like cleaning their tears and all, they were like. So I knew this information was useful for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's quite scary like, when I did the report. Basically, I wouldn't leave that report lying around. Like, people would le learn a lot about me. So mm -hmm. the, the key phrase that this trainer gave us was, if I understand you and you understand me, doesn't it make sense that we work well together? And I hope that can happen for parenting. Mm -hmm. So today, the main concept I'm going to deposit with you is this thing called pace. Now, pace, pace, mm -hmm. pace. so fast, slow. There's nothing to do with IQ. There's nothing to do with uh, EQ as well, but it has everything to do with our preference. So inside all of us, right, there is what we call a speedometer. Mm -hmm. right? Every car, every transport system has some kind of speedometer. And if you could imagine, right, the kind of speedometer on a fast person, right, you want it to go fast. You want to have freedom. So imagine the picture on top, right, you're on a boat uh, with great speed and you're like the sky is the limit you can go anywhere as long as you can see you probably can get there it's about possibilities it's about freedom you can just avoid things you can see them far away that's fantastic but once you dive into the ocean mm -hmm. it's a different world suddenly you can't go very fast suddenly everything is a bit interesting and mysterious you can only see right in front of you you can't see very far and you start to be curious about things. You start to explore, look at the processes around you, and then you start to look at how things work. You start to appreciate the immediate things around you. So this is two kinds of uh, people. Uh, if we were to kind of like divide the world into two, we call them fast and slow. So we'll dive a bit deeper. So just, just to give you a sense of that. 
So let's uh, go down further. So there are two concepts, but I'll just touch on one today. Uh, if you want to find out more on that, we can show you how to get there. The, we, there's a series going on, and this is part of it. And we are all different, so we see things differently, we have different perspectives, and we have our preferred pace and our priorities. So priorities, I'll touch on it very briefly. Priorities is about how important things are to us. And that means we see different things differently. Like for example, some of us may value relationships a lot. Some of us may not value relationships that much. And there's a reason for that. Okay, so when you find that it's maybe a bit hard to connect with your children because they don't seem to care, apparently, or they seem to be more interested in doing things rather than relating with people. What, what's that all about? And how do we get there to relate and communicate with them? Right, so there are tools for that. Here we're going to focus on pace, which is a big concept on its own. So pace, faster pace, slower pace. The question is what drives this thinking and what drives this behavior? So when we think of why a person likes to move so fast in his mind, uh, in, in terms of wanting to move agenda, wanting progress, what's the thinking and feeling behind it? Okay, so let's look at the behaviors first. This is my mascot for fast pace, oh. Scrap. I don't know what this, this thing is, like it's a squirrel plus dinosaur or what. <laughs> but he, he goes around and apparently he's the cause of all the natural disasters on planet Earth. Lah. So he goes around with the acorn and he just tries to find another place to shove it in, right? And then hide it and, and, and he, he, he's basically the epitome of fast pace. Lah. Movement, progress. So you have a fast pace boss, they want things to move, they want things to progress. Where's the email? How come the meeting should have been done yesterday? They take action, they will take initiative and go for things that are obvious. This needs to be done. They go for it straight away. They don't like interruptions or stops. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's a total waste of momentum, right? And so they think a lot about the future. They think a lot about possibilities and they're always solutioning in their head. They are almost all the time problem solving, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So the thing you might hear them say is, can we keep moving? We don't have all day, you know, you know let's move on. So there must be good reasons why a person behaves that way and this means that uh, this person uh, now we have to generalize uh, it can be mm -hmm. your child it can mm -hmm. be yourself it can be your boss it can be your spouse doesn't matter mm -hmm. any human being can fall into any of these categories so if the person is fast-paced you might see some of these behaviors so why go so fast or why do people go faster so I usually like to make my audience work hard. La. So if you have a pen and paper or a handphone near you and you're not using it to watch this, right? I will suggest that you take down some of these things, right? So for your own learning, because I think you will learn more from aha moments from yourself than from me speaking alone. I, I really believe in that. So there are people who go fast or faster. There must be good reasons. In your head, you can start listing down a few. Why do they want to go faster? There must be some good reason, right? John. <laughs> Why yes. do you think they go so fast? What's the point of going so fast? This one is in the in the office context or home context. General context. Why do people want to move so fast in life? Okay, What's so so let's say if I'm representing the parents again, yeah, probably some of the things that they may say that uh, they think that that uh, there's not enough time. There's too much things to do, and and it could be a habit that they have build team themselves without knowing that I just need to finish this one so that I can do the next one so I can do the next, the next one because simply there's not enough time okay and so the way they look at it is exactly what you share what you share and many of us may actually share that sentiment there's just not enough time I need more time to do more things so that I can do more things yes so I have more time to do maybe you can feel my pain yeah, so you get the idea. This is this is a very fast-paced person. Mm -hmm. And this fast-paced person, the last thing they want is for someone to hold on to them, right? And not let go of an issue. The last thing they want is for someone to go to them, right? And just cling on to them and say, no, I don't move. So you can mm -hmm. imagine when you walk along the beach, right? And there's this crap, that little crap that grabs your finger, right? And refuses mm -hmm. to let go, right? It's like, mm -hmm. like, yeah. So you can also see now there's a pattern that certain things will also trigger fast-paced people more than others. When a fast-paced person wants to go fast, they want to achieve more. They believe that living life is all about getting more done, having more variety, possibilities, future, 
So I'm repeating some of the things I shared. And this is important because if you have a child like that, they probably are thinking about a lot of things other than the present. If you have a child like that, they are probably thinking about how to solve the problem because I will tell you a fact, uh, they are very good also at creating problems. That's why they are very good at solving problems. So if you're parenting and like you don't solve the problem for them, you know, then you deprive them of the skill. <laughs> Since they created the problem, let them solve the problem. It's okay. It's part of their journey. Because they will act first, probably think later. They will act first and then figure out along the way. You may also find out that this child likes to talk through their thoughts. Because as they talk it out, they figure out their, their solution. So if you are a fast-paced adult, right, and for example, you lose your wallet, suddenly you realize, hey, my wallet's gone, where is it? So the first thing you do is you take action. You will just move around, try to figure out along the way. So you will start digging through stuff, going back to the places. You move first, you think along the way. Whereas the other side of planet Earth, which is slower pace, does a very different thing. And we will go into that pretty soon. So why go faster? There's more, more to life, variety, future, and all that. We don't want to stop, we want more. We want to see a bigger picture. Here, we have slower pace. Take a chill pill. This probably is the cause of traffic jams along PIE, SLE, whatever. <laughs> because <laughs> when there's an accident, people like to slow down and go like, who is at fault? What's the car plate number? How did anyone call the police? They're trying to figure out something. So you can tell a slow paced person, right? By them wanting to make sense of something. Then mm. there needs to be some reason behind it, some rationale. It has to make sense, it has to connect. So observation, inquiry, testing. So if your friend says, oh, I ate this supplement, very good, you know. Then goes, oh, is it? So what, 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 what do you notice? Oh, uh, I tell you when I eat this, uh, oh, uh, very smooth, uh, everything come out. Uh. Sorry for the graphic thing. So uh, they, they ask, are you sure? Well, so before that, cannot. Uh. So they'll ask questions and they'll test your theory. They'll test your observation. They'll test and your hypothesis. So they're trying to understand what is going on. And so they don't like surprises or demands. So the last thing you should do to this type of people, right, is to throw a surprise birthday party because they cannot fully appreciate it. Okay, so in this case, you can surprise the fast-paced person. They go, oh, and they'll quickly adapt. They'll flow along. The, but for this slower pace, right, they, 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 they will hang. You know? <laughs> so true story, yeah, this person who is slow pace received a birthday present in his room. And one night on his birthday, he opened the door to his room and then he realized, why is this gigantic box with a ribbon there, you know? He basically freaked out. Like, and before he could recover from shock, right? Four friends jumped from behind him and shouted, Happy birthday! The correct response uh, is, oh my gosh, thank you for saving me the logistics ha hassle of moving this big box home, you know? You have given to me on, you know, uh, uh, dinner or what, but you moved it all the way here. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you're spending my birthday with me. I'm so thankful that you remember and you bought an expensive gift. This obviously doesn't look cheap. That's the correct response. Uh. <laughs> What's the response of that guy? Who, ha, ha, who, who, ha, ha. He needs a debrief, uh, basically. He's thinking, how did the present get here? Who took my keys without me knowing, right? Uh -huh. and how, how do you all buy this thing? How do you know I need this? He basically needs a debrief. So they don't like surprises. And that's mm. maybe why the Singapore culture is like, hey, John, what do you want for your birthday? Uh? You just tell me. La. <laughs> After that, I'll be like, I tell every one of John's friends, right? Hey, John wants a new PSP. Yeah? And then we all, you know, uh, yeah. crowd fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. You can just uh, so, pass, you can just, just have the PSP sent to my house without coming. So the point is that then there's no surprise and you know exactly what you're getting and you know you will love it. And <laughs> but it's so boring, right? <laughs> so, uh, in, in case you're wondering about statistics, uh, right? Mm -hmm. About 30% of the world is fast paced. That means about 70% of the world is slower paced. Mm -hmm. And the majority in Singapore is also like that. Global statistics, mm -hmm. same, same. So they think a lot about precedence. So reviews are very important, right? Precedence. Who has eaten this before? Who has used this before? Reviews are very important. Who has eaten this particular chakwetia? Who has done this uh, before? Have they used this service provider before? And mm. I think of probabilities. What's the probability of success? So if the probability of success is high, then good, let's go for it. And they will have questions along the way. Mm. But they may take time to formulate those questions and they may take time to figure out what they are really asking as well. So 
in kind of a live setting like this, right? If let's say we were all in Zoom and everyone could respond, right? And I say anyone has a question, right? These people will not respond first. The ones who respond first are the fast paced people oh. because they're thinking as they talk. Here they'll be like, let me observe first. Okay, they ask that question. So maybe I'll ask that question later. Yeah, okay, what about that? You know, he didn't substantiate that. You know. So they're thinking along the way and, and that's the same thing. So that's for adults and it's easy to observe for adults. What about children? So they'll say, hang on, wait, wait a minute. What, what's going on here? Can you help me understand what's going on? So that's the main thing that a slower paced person would be thinking. And it's important because we also think about this. Why do they do that? What is the need driving that behavior? So a person who wants things to slow down is because they want to have the advantage of being able to plan. They want mm -hmm. the advantage of being able to strategize, mm -hmm. to view the options available, check facts, understand and validate, then go into something because they also want to save time. You see, the goal of the fast pace and the goal of the slow pace is the same. That's strange, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're human. We want to save time. More speed, less haste. Mm. So to go faster, go slower. So for them, to go faster, go faster. Go even faster, find technology. Mm -hmm. So they will be more open to technology. They'll be more open to new things because they want to move faster. Anything they can get me ahead, I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will queue for iPhone. Mm -hmm. For the rest of us here, downstairs, we would be thinking, let's see, wait for the beta version to come out for them to clear all the bugs first. And the price drop a bit. Oh, shock. Anyway, we wait for the reviews. I'm sure got some sketch one. See, like Samsung, you buy too early, it explodes in your face, right? So <laughs> they will be like that. They'll be thinking like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is when you put two people together and you get them married, that's where all these things go Woohoo, ballistic, right? Mm -hmm. So I am married. Uh, I think me and my wife have very different pace, um, especially when it comes to different things. So there's a general kind of thing, like generally people are very fast paced, but maybe when it comes to certain things, right, people slow down like crazy. Mm. So to me, kitchen stuff, when we were first moving into a new home, right, when we were thinking of like buying stuff, uh, one of the things we wanted was a, a, a kind of multi-purpose microwave oven. So can steam, la, can bake, la, can grill, la, everything like microwave. Mm -hmm. And then to me, we had that much kitchen space, we have a budget, and uh, there are two, three brands we will probably want to buy. To me, it's like, it's going to be a simple decision. So we went mm -hmm. to Best Denki, and we say, okay, let's uh, maybe make a decision. And then my wife goes like, nah, let's do some research first. So she really goes mm -hmm. and does some research. She scrolls through all the reviews, the reviews of the reviews. She go and call her mother and her mother's friends and ask them about after sales service, ask them about whether they, this brand, how long it lasts. I'm like, how many chickens could we have baked? Uh -huh. How many meals could we have prepared? Like this is not oh, three months later. Three months later. Oh. I decide enough lah. Okay, we just, let's just get that thing. So one fine day I trick her and say, hey, let's have dinner at Bishan because there's best tanky there again. So we went there and then we went in and I say, oh, today we, you know, let's have a look and maybe we can decide lah. So after looking through a few more models and talking to the salesperson, finally, we have achieved some progress huh? from mm -hmm. 10 models, it became two models. So I'm like, yes, mm. I say, hey, let's buy this one. This one has a bit more freebie. The warranty is longer. Value is there, right? Then my wife said, wait, uh, I think next month there is a sale. Usually there's a sale next month. And mm -hmm. then we have some vouchers to claim from Citibank and all that. I'm like, what? So you, you can see, right? There's a difference in pace. Mm. I'll give you a reverse example. La. When it comes yes. to buying TV, right, I'm the uncle. La. I'm mm -hmm. the one who stares at the TV and say, this one a bit more yellow than that one, right? Mm -hmm. And this one, you hear uh, the sound, oh, the bird is nearer. They want the bird like very far away. Yeah. So this kind of thing, I'm very peculiar <laughs> about audio and video visuals. So uh, that, that, that drove her nuts. La. So can you see a pace difference and how that works in decision making? Yes, yes. And I also want to ask, uh, because it sounds uh, really interesting that when you share, you and your wife has uh, have different paces. What about for kids? So uh, from experience, if a child is fast paced and the um, mommy is slow paced versus mommy is, is fast paced and child is slow paced, so how can parents support their children with different uh, speed? Good. I, I think that's a very great question. Mm. In, in fact, it comes back to self-care 
Mm-hmm. If I am a fast-paced parent, I, I need some self-care. I need to work out issues and work on things that allow me to be released. Remember the crap analogy I gave earlier? So mm-hmm. if there are issues that are always holding you back, right, you need to work on some of those issues. It could be relationships with people. It could be unforgiveness. It could be uh, old accounts that have yet to be settled. It mm-hmm. could be things that you haven't done because you move so fast, right? There was some admin that you didn't clear because those are things that take time and they are very slow moving. <laughs> mm. So they, they, they prefer if technology didn't help them, then they may have left it out. If technology reminds them, they probably have gotten it settled or they will get mm. someone else to settle for them in that sense. So um, it's to have that self-care so that they have the freedom to move ahead. They also mm-hmm. re- need to realize, right, if you're a fast-paced parent, uh, you need to realize that not everyone is fast-paced. Mm-hmm. In fact, seven out of 10, the chances are people are not with you. Which means uh, if you move ahead and you go like, there's a sale, we need to grab it before <laughs> we lose it and all that, right? People may not fully understand that mindset and you need to take time to explain to people, why are you going so fast? Mm-hmm. Same thing if you're going slow, why are you going so slow? There must be good reasons, but you cannot expect and demand for the other person to understand. Mm-hmm. And certainly for your kid, they have no way of explaining. Mm. So it's up to us to realize that, okay, my kid's slow paced. Mm. You know, maybe you have two fast paced parents, right? And you're thinking, mm. why is my kid taking forever, right? To do something, you know, literally forever. Because they want to color it, right? They, go, they want to, you know, no, I still have three lines I haven't colored properly. Leave mm. me alone. You know, let me do my thing. I want to have my own time, my own cocoon here. Don't disturb me. And mm. they are like, we need to move to another place. We got a party to attend. We got this to go to. And you're like, ah, so you're frustrated with the kid, understandably. Because the kid's very slow in every sense of the word. And so you're thinking, is my kid slow also? No. In fact, your kid may be very brilliant because they have been observing, taking in everything. It's just that they may not be the most expressive. And so it is a challenge because the parents are trying to get the child to express, but they may be exasperated by the fact that this child is not responding. So mm-hmm. turn it around, huh? two very slow paced parents and then this kid which is out of the world fast, right? <laughs> Basically, I mean, to be honest, uh, when young kids are young, right, they are very easily distracted. So it may not be a full good indication of like, oh, my child's fast paced. Actually, every kid is very fast paced in that sense. But fast paced in the sense that they think a lot about solutions, they think a lot about possibilities, they imagine a lot and they like to talk it out and they will take action. They don't sit there, observe, you know, they're not like that type. So you can see there is a difference. Mm-hmm. So a fast paced child moves along and is more open to change. So you can see some of those things. Uh, but I'm coming back to the self care part. So if you're a slow paced parent, right, you need mm-hmm. me time. Mm-hmm. Me time is very important, which means that parenting is very fast. And you know, the moment your child Wow, that's it, I tell you, the whole world changed, right? Mm. That you work around the schedule of the poor baby who wants milk every few hours and all that, everything. Lah. So mm-hmm. parenting becomes very fast paced and it becomes like almost blink, blink, blink and the day goes by, day goes by, childcare, come back, fetch here, go there, all the arrangements, right? And it's crazy logistics when, when I, I, I can understand when uh, suddenly you cannot go to your grandparents' house now. Like, huh, then how do I take care of the kid? And then you go into berserk mode, right? Mm. So it's a very fast paced thing, parenting. But because your preference is slow pace, you wish things slow down, that tells me your preference, you need me time because you haven't connected the dots. You feel out of touch with yourself, out of touch with your emotions. You feel that life is just flying by and I, I haven't made sense of it. I don't know the purpose of some of the things I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I need to make sense of certain things and there's no time. So you need to carve out time and protect that time in order to function well. If not, the demands of parenting may just wear you out and thin and you become very negative as natural with every human being. Yeah. I I have a slide actually that shows a case study. Maybe we could explore that. Yes, yes. Yeah. That'll be good. So here we have a fast paced dad and a slow paced child. Yeah, this will suit me. This will suit more for my middle child. (laughs) Okay. Cool. So if a fast paced dad, dad always has an action packed schedule, is multitasking mm-hmm. a lot of the time, mm-hmm. can't remember details of the conversation because everything is blazing fast. So mm-hmm. details are very hard to catch. We just catch the main points. We catch the important things. We know when to feed. <laughs> we know when to take the baby out. We know what are the main things. But in terms of whether we fold it this way or that way, uh, maybe not to shove it in this compartment, not that compartment, maybe we don't get it. Okay, and we, we sometimes say things just to satisfy the child because we want to move on. 
mm-hmm. right? So, uh, and he's worried about the child because why? Why is he, this child of mine so timid and slow? That's a perception issue. Uh. Mm-hmm. Why does it take forever to finish something? <laughs> But what's with sweating all the small stuff? I mean, you color already color lah. Don't have to keep coloring and circling until it's dark enough. You know, things like it's done. Your homework is done. Can we can we move on? You know, kind of thing. So from the child's perspective, this is where interest is interesting because the child cannot talk, right? So I I I guess I have to be the spokesperson here a bit lah. Mm-hmm. The child wants guidance. The child is slow paced. If a child is slow paced, very often the child wants guidance. And here's what guidance looks like, huh? They look to you for help very often. Mommy, mommy, can you help me color this? Mm-hmm. They're like, no, you know how to color. You color lah. Just take color pencil, color lah. Right? And it's, it, they try very hard to understand something. So you see frowns very often on this uh, slow paced child. Like, mm-hmm. Right? And they, mm-hmm. they take time to take the first step because they're trying to see a, a model. So if there's modeling going on, ah, very good, very fast one. They learn very fast. So mm-hmm. second child, right? The second child will probably take after the first child in many areas because they learn through that modeling, because they observe. Remember, E R E Jam. Everybody observe, right? Ah, so observant. Mm-hmm. They take time to. Okay, this child goes to the other child and says hi and shake hand. Okay, then later I will do go to the same child, shake hand and say hi because I've seen mm-hmm. it before. It's safe. I know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Someone has modeled for me. So this is the what the child things are. Uh, that doesn't listen. So I won't tell him. <laughs> so some of you are thinking, what? No, 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 I want to listen. You're not telling me. Ah, yo. But here's the child. And the child is quite unable, especially when they're younger, to say certain things. So mm-hmm. dad doesn't listen, so I don't tell him. Right, so it reinforces the fact that maybe dad doesn't, is too busy. Dad may not care. Dad doesn't have time for me. I can't do this if nobody teaches me how. Of course, we have to educate the child uh, that you can do it. Look, someone else has done it before. Why don't you follow Coco? Why don't you follow Mei Mei? Uh, th- I mean, uh, uh, someone else. If they are in a social situation, such as in a childcare center, in kindergarten, they have role models. They can look at behavior models, people who are clear, clearly next to them, near them, near their ability, and they can just copy in that sense. Can that show me what to do? Mm. So in this case, the requirement, I guess, is for that to slow down, to adjust back down to the pace of the child, to say, okay, son, what can I help you with? Mm. And the, the tone, tone uh, of the voice is important because mm. the, the fast pace that usually has a tone that is quite direct and, and, and quick because we want to move on. So maybe we need to slow down a little bit when talking to this child and say, okay, Yes, I'm here. Okay, what do you need help in? Okay, mm-hmm. then we give instructions. And then you have to empower the child to try. And then affirm. And if you need to, break it down into steps. And I'll give a bit more tips on that, on how to do it. So, but you can see the dynamic over here, right? Can get unhealthy after some time, maybe 10 years. Right, at first the child won't really remember, but I'm also a certified marriage counselor. Mm-hmm. And I begin to realize that a lot of issues begin with childhood. I also mm-hmm. watched a recent thing on uh, View. It is this thing called My 600 Pound Life. It tracks one year in the life of uh, super morbidly obese people who are trying mm-hmm. to lose weight. And it always almost goes back to their childhood. Mm-hmm. And what the parents said to them, what the parents did or did not do. So a lot of it has to do with how strategically we parent our children. And mm-hmm. I think that this understanding and awareness, you realize, oh, that's, that makes sense. I didn't realize my child is slower paced. I mm. didn't realize I'm so fast paced. Because any quite faster pace compared to the child is very fast. But we may not understand that. Adults may say, hey, bro, slow down, chill. Right, mm. we can manage this project. But for other people like our children, they may not be in a position to explain things to us. Definitely not, unless they are geniuses. But even then, they may not have the vocabulary to share with us. Or the mm. guts sometimes. So this is one scenario. Yes, I just want to jump in quickly with a quick question. Uh, because from my experience of, of, of working with parents in my social work practice, when I was a social worker, uh, to to invite parents to walk down the journey uh, of remembering their childhood is something that uh, not all parents will welcome. Will, 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 uh, are open to it. 
Yeah, so so let's say if you are working with your parents, uh, how do you invite them to be open to this idea that, hey, yes, well, you come to me thinking that the problem lies with your kids. How, but now how can you get your parents to be aware that I want to start to work with you so that you can probably do something with your childhood and then so that you can be a better parent to your own kids. Maybe I can simplify a bit in that sense. I, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, thinking back on all the experiences I had with counseling people and helping them walk through certain yeah. marriage issues or, or parenting issues, right? It is just basically down to this thing called needs. Mm. Um, everyone has needs. So if we respect another person, we recognize that that person has needs and we want to try our best. In my definition of love, it is to meet the needs of the other person. Because if you don't meet the needs of the other person, the person has every right to do a lot of things. But if you meet the needs of the person and the person still does all kinds of other things, then mm -hmm. it is unreasonable of the other person. So if you are agreeable with this proposition of mine for parents who are listening, then you would basically understand that let's try to meet each other's needs. I'm not uh, saying wants, uh, I'm saying needs. Mm. Some of us have a high need for understanding. Some mm. of us have a high need for things to be broken down. Mm -hmm. Some of us have a high need for guidance. Mm -hmm. Some of us on the upside, we have a high need for freedom. <laughs> we have a high need for variety. We have a high need not to be uh, breathed down at our neck all the time. We have a high need to explore. We have a high need to problem solve and own something on our own and do something and be independent. So if we recognize those needs, then we are on our way to building a healthy relationship. But if we accidentally or worse, right, deliberately deny those needs, right, mm. then it's going to be a very painful existence. Mm. Marriages that, that basically are very painful, right, usually have this ingredient. They don't recognize each other's needs. Mm. Even though there may be some communication going on, but they don't recognize that there's a core need of a person. And when we don't, right, then it's like, it's depriving a person of oxygen, you know. The person will... Gr <laughs> And then, you know what? Violence will ensue. Because if mm. I can't get my oxygen, I'm going to die, right? I don't care how I'm going to get oxygen. If I need to scratch you, I'll scratch you. If I need to punch you, I'll punch you. If I need to murder you to get you away, right? So I can get the oxygen source, right? I will mm -hmm. do that. And mm -hmm. it's just human nature. Mm -hmm. So before it gets there, let's recognize the needs. And then we, we, we love people by saying that, I understand you have a need for affirmation. Thank mm -hmm. you for doing this. It makes a lot of difference. Meet the need and do it sincerely mm. some, I think, yeah. some of us may may not be trained in your field and i think from experience as well some of some of us may be confused between wants and needs yeah so could you give some more examples uh like wants versus needs for couples uh married couples and also wants versus needs for between a parent and a child okay i'll skip this so i'm gonna go and talk about the needs and how to dance with uh, outgoing or fast-paced child, which will apply mm. to marriage as well. Sure. So dancing is a special art because I can't dance. I have two left feet. So every time I dance with my wife right, or attempt to, right, she will get injured for sure. I will step on somewhere oh, right, or she will step on me. Most of the time I step on her. Like. And if she's wearing heels, then good luck to me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so dancing means that we follow in rhythm. And in this case, the analogy works very well because we need to go faster with people who are faster. We mm. need to slow down with people who are slower. And that's where we meet halfway. We need to understand why the person is fast paced, but we need to invite the person to slow down a little bit so that we can agree on some things and walk together at the same pace. So if you're working with someone, whether it's a child or an adult, and one thing you want to do is first thing you want to inv assure them of involvement. Don't go do something without them because they're like, I, I just missed out on something. There's no progress. With, with, you progress without me. How can you do that? So they, you need to assure them of involvement in new initiatives. Regular updates and tracking progress because they like to know what's going on. Right. So if you have a, let's say my wife is very fast paced, I will say, dear, I'm here and here. I'm going to do this and that. Uh, and it basically meets a need. They feel that, oh, there's progress. We are moving on towards something. Thank you, dear. You know? So speak to them about the positives of the future. So if a fast-paced child, talk to them about 
hey, you know, when you grow up, you know, you say, I want to be the strongest. Yeah, when you grow up and you can be the strongest, you can do this and you can do that. And you know what? You can even do this. So you paint them the positives of the future. And that's, that's going to excite them. Same for people, right? If you have a fast-paced wife, but we don't paint them that, that future and that positive, they don't know mm. where we are going, right? Mm. So everyone wants to know where we are going. Uh, so where are we going? <laughs> are we going somewhere? Well, what's the next destination? How do we get there? Are we moving there? Yeah, okay, good. So if not, then you get a, are we there yet? <laughs> are we there yet? <laughs> you know, the, the, the famous uh, scene in uh, uh, Shrek, right? Are we there yet? Yep. So we, we just gonna get naggy, la, right? But because we have, we fail to recognize that there's a need, the, the need is that, like, where are we going? Are we going anywhere? Give life to whatever possibilities there are. So don't just assume that the other person can understand. Because in your head, if you're slow paced, especially, you are planning, you're scheming, you have this whole overarching plan, right? Five years mm. plan. But nobody mm. knows your plan. You have to communicate. So the point is here to give life to that possibility and to give imagination, even if it's half-baked. Say it's half-baked, it's okay. The person can take it because the person has half-baked st- stuff all the time in his head or her head. Because they're also imagining, they're also envisioning, and they're also moving along as they talk about it. So it's fine. And don't bore them with too much operational detail. So the last thing you should do to a child, right, that's very fast-paced. Okay, later we go auntie's place, you got to take off your shoe, right? Then take out your shoe and then put it in the thing. And I want you to wipe, okay? Your socks you take out, right? Then you, you go too deep into taking the art of taking out socks and putting the shoes into the right place, right? By the time you move on to how to take out things from your pencil box, right, they are lost. So they cannot take too much details. So how? <laughs> but they need to know, right? Okay, okay, okay. Just in time instructions. As and when things unfold, give them that guidance, give them that direction. And if possible, get them to like, uh, repeat back to you, get them to share what they did. And so they'd have a, they have a habit of always reflecting and going back. And so that they remember some of these details. Mm. Tell them what they shouldn't do for a kid. It's good to lay boundaries. Tell them what they shouldn't do. Okay. You don't go and punch uncle's dog. Okay. Do not punch <laughs> uncle's dog. Okay. Do not pull the hair from the cat. Okay. Don't do that. Huh? Do not strangle the bird. Ah, okay. So you have to tell them, do not put your hand to the fish tank. So a lot of don'ts, but you have to tell them, don't do that. Why? Because they will test the boundaries of whatever can be. Mm-hmm. So you can expect a fast paced child to climb onto you. You're a new uncle. John mm-hmm. is so interesting. Can I touch your specs? Can I tickle your ear? Can I lick <laughs> your face? Can I, can I open your shirt? No, they will try uh-huh. because they are, they are very curious and they want to know where's the limit. Because if you don't tell them the limit, they will just go on ahead because they are going to progress. Oh, so you're okay with that. Okay, nah, put your shirt. Oh, you're okay with that? Tickle you. Oh, you're okay with that? Play you some more. Hit you, hit you, hit you. Then after that, it becomes painful. And so we need to try to help them understand some boundaries, mm. what they shouldn't do so that they have freedom to do other things as well. Mm. Don't tell them what they can do. They, they may feel very limited and restricted. Say, okay, you can't do this, but you know what? You can do everything else. So they feel that, oh, I've got, that you meet their need for freedom. Mm. And make it sound, and if all things fail, right? Make it sound like a great buffet. Mm. Oh, look, later we are going to this place. We are going to have, you know, all these people that you can meet. And you know what? You can play with all these toys and you, you will get time to actually watch TV. Well, so there's a lot of variety, there's choice, there's good value and it's happening. So this is the approach to pain to a fast paced child because they need to want, they want to feel excited and they want you to excite them as well. So they'll just lay out the facts, give it some life and that's helpful for them. Of course, it may not be so intuitive and easy for let's say a slow paced parent to do that. Mm. But it works for the child. Actually, we're all like children. La, so it works for adults as well. Mm. Think back, you can apply all this uh, to your boss. Think back, you can apply all this to your spouse, especially if both of you are of different pace. So that's how you dance with someone who is outgoing and fast paced. So I'll move on to the slow pace one. Mm. So for a slow pace, <clears throat> assure them of consultation. Consultation of what? Uh, and implementation. Tell them that you want to hear from them. Then I'm going to ask you for whether you want chocolate or orange, okay? Uh, ask them for their opinion. Speak to them about the chances of success because they need someone to talk to them and, and for them to see steps 
if they can see the process, right, they know that they can get there. So if you show them a show where it's super inspiring, but there's no process involved, right, they will get very stressed because they see the end goal, but they don't know how to get there. They can't, mm. they can't uh, uh, envision like, what do I do to get from now all the way to there? I, I can't see it. Then they get very stressed because there's no guidance. So speak to them about the chances of success. Help them gain confidence. Help them gain clarity on what to do, how to move on. And then give them facts and reasons for any changes that occur. Especially if you're going to a new environment, right? For younger kids, you probably understand that. Mm-hmm. Like later, we're going to uh, so-and-so uncle's house. You may not have seen him before. I'll show you his picture. See? Ah, see? He's very cute looking. And then he has a dog. Okay, later we're going to see a dog. Give facts and reasons. We're going there because we need uh, help from uncle. and uncle. That, So you can do this and that. Give steps. Give facts. Give reasons. Okay, that will help. Answer the very fact that they have likely all these questions in their head. How? Why? And give them advance warning about upcoming events and people, which I just did just now, like I mentioned. So tell them what they could do and they should do. So break it down. The steps are very important, right? That's why recipes, cooking shows, where they show you step by step how to do it, Mm -hmm. are very popular because that fits perfectly into a slow paced person's lifestyle. Ah, right, I can refer to that. I feel very safe. Mm. Every time I forget, I'll just watch the YouTube video again on how to make chawan mushi, on how to make uh, cha siu, on how to uh, make a nice pasta. So mm. all these things are very much welcome. And make it sound like a new sofa. It's going to be comfortable, it's new, it's okay, it's not shocking, it is stable and it will get more comfortable over time. So assurance is important for this person, a lot of assurance. So I hope that this gives a, a bit more of a handle on how we can work with slower paced people and slower paced children. Mm-hmm. Same thing. We are all same creatures of, of the same need. So the needs differ, but the and and the uh, what we call the expression of it may change as we age, but mm-hmm. the principles are there. So a slow paced person usually has the same concerns. They want validity, they want assurance, they want to know that it's work, they want to know that it's not a waste of time. Mm-hmm. They want to know that I'm spending time where it's worth. I, I know that there's a purpose to it. I mm-hmm. want clarity, I want confidence, I want step. So it's about the same. Yeah. Mm. And it sounds to me like uh, for fast paced show, it's more like updating him in advance and painting him the overall picture. What will happen next? You're talking about the fast the fast, the, the fast paced child because I'm I'm trying to break it down for the parents yeah, because right. there's so much content and I'm also trying to digest and reflecting upon my own life because I got three daughters and um, the youngest and the oldest one they are fast paced and the middle child is slow paced and I'm fast paced uh-huh. so so I'm also your target audience and I'm trying to look at which one is it, it, it fits my needs now. Right, so your whole family probably are very excitable people <laughs> with a lot of energy. And this uh, middle child will probably feel maybe a little out of place, like, wow, wow so many things happening all around me, right? So if you look at a slow-paced child, uh, is to assure them of uh, and, and explaining. Uh, so it's a lot of communication to them mm-hmm. so that they feel that they are involved. They are not mm-hmm. left out. Because you all move very quickly, right? And maybe, you know, oh, they are all running, doing other things already. And I'm, I'm, I'm here and I, I'm still struggling with trying to make sense of this thing. So mm-hmm. that assurance is very important mm-hmm. to tell them that, you know, other people can do it, you can do it too. And it takes a bit of time and mm. it's okay to take time. You have to give them permission to have that slow pace. Mm. Yeah, so parents always give your child that permission to be fast, that permission to be slow. Mm. But at the same time, you can start to help uh, your child to understand why sometimes things need to move faster. Mm-hmm. Why sometimes things need to move slower. Mm-hmm. There's a big difference between me doing this. Uh, my goal is to get from one end of the room to the other end of the room and mm-hmm. out the door. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and let's say there's a room full of people here. Although mm-hmm. there shouldn't be like, because there's social distancing. But let's say my goal is to get to the door, right? What I shouldn't do is budge my way through. I just go and then push people aside and then get out of my way, move, you know, and then it's stupid. That is demanding for other people to understand my need. 
Mm. However, there's a difference if I communicate. Hi, room full of people. Uh, my goal is to get to the door. So mm. I would appreciate if some of you could just help me out by moving out of the way. Thank you. You will see people help you. You will see people move aside. And if you can say, I really need to get there because it's my life goal. Somebody might just wheel a chair in front of you and say, sit on it, I'll put you through. Mm. You will get support probably when you start to share your needs. And when mm. you communicate those needs, it means that other people are also aware and you're mm. not demanding for that uh, attention or demanding for people to understand, I've been married for 30 years, can't you even? So, you know, kind of thing, we hear that a lot. But if mm. you communicate and learn to say, I wish that you could move faster because sometimes we miss out on opportunities and I'm a bit frustrated with you. Mm-hmm. I hope that mm-hmm. you do that so that I feel that you are with me when we are making this decision. That is mm-hmm. going to be very helpful. Mm. Yeah, as you communicate. So the child cannot communicate the need, so you have to check with the child. Do you mm-hmm. want to know how to do it? Mm-hmm. Do you want more guidance? Should you want me daddy to show you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's how it works with a slower paced child. Mm. Sounds like to work with the slower paced child is to really sit down and talk to the child and doing lots of explaining and also breaking it down into steps so that she can follow because probably she she needs me to repeat because of her slower speed. Yeah, she's trying to understand one thing at a time. So mm. don't overwhelm her with like from the start to finish because she can't take it. She, she wants to know but she, she just don't have the capacity. As she grows, maybe she will have the capacity to then that's the detail orientation part of that, that strength that comes from the slow paced person. Mm. Uh, take in more facts and all that because then they start to make sense of all this information and it becomes a strength eventually. Mm. Yeah. So it doesn't mean they will remain slow paced all their life. They, are, they will learn to speed up because as the surroundings, I mean if the whole family is fast paced, they, she'll pick up. She'll pick up and say, Oh, there are times when I can step up and, and just be faster. Mm. Yeah. Because there's modeling involved as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Is, is, is there anything else you want to share with us after this slide? Um, actually, I had another case study, but I think we have covered mainly the, the differences and we talk about needs. So to the parents, my encouragement to you is self-care. Uh, communicate your needs not to your child but sometimes mm-hmm. you can communicate with your child especially when they start growing up you know mommy needs to do work and that kind of thing we communicate our needs mm-hmm. we need to get certain things done we need for progress we need to do this and that share and explain don't demand um, as you don't want your child to demand from you you have to teach your child to explain so it's an EQ skill after a while um, this is important so you need to start to do more of this Spice Girls thing, right? So um, mm. tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want, okay? And by that time, they're adults. But mm. between you and your spouse or you and your people who are staying with you, it's important to tell people what you want, mm. to be assertive. Mm. So hopefully this whole webinar and, and interview has helped us to maybe increase a little bit on that awareness level so we can share with other people our needs, communicate it, just as I communicated, I said, my life goal is to get out of the door as fast as possible. Could you help me by moving? So then it will help and train other people to be sensitive to your needs because they, you have communicated a need, they know how to respond to it, and then they learn to take responsibility, which means it's the ability to respond. But mm-hmm. the, the, the awareness must come first, the, the, the kind of like communication of that so that they can respond. The ability to respond comes from knowing awareness and then deciding that they want to do something about it and then they grow in responsibility. So mm. I mentioned the source. Uh, so I'm going to share very briefly the source. Um, yes, some of you may find some of these things familiar. Uh, the information I've taken is DISC based, but I say based because I never mentioned DISC in the entire <laughs> entire session. Mm-hmm. I find DISC frankly quite useless. So I never mention DISC anymore because it's not functional knowledge. You have to mm-hmm. understand the whole vocab behind DISC and all that. But when I tell you pace and priority, mm-hmm. it then becomes extremely functional information. These are the two building blocks of DISC. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I've just mentioned pace. Pace, how do I know for sure? Some of you may say, can I take a report for that? Yes, there's a report for that. And we can we will gladly walk through the report with you because this is the report that saved my partner's life. Lah. 
when she <coughs> said that you know uh, the report said that expect your child to lie because she's so concerned about the relationship she'll do anything to not get mommy upset and i'm like oh that makes sense and then my partner oh that perfectly makes sense now mm. so my child is not a liar my child is just so scared of losing that trust and that relationship that she'll do anything including lying mm. because she doesn't want to get in trouble with mommy ah so then it changes the perspective so that is the thing. I would highly recommend these two reads. Uh, a lot of what I shared comes from different children, different needs. If you understand the child's needs, you have a much better time handling them because you know when you're pressing the wrong buttons. Yeah. And you know how to press the right buttons as well so that you get them to grow and not be triggered and they listen and they understand and they develop at the same time. So mm. if you have any questions, you can email um, that email and just let me know that you've uh, met me before and 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 and, and I will, we can take it on from there and for those of you who came i just want to share some resources with you you mm -hmm. can just scan the qr code and uh, fill up a quick survey that will help us to understand what are the topics that are relevant to you and we can develop some resources for that and, and john has kindly allowed me to share this mm -hmm. so you can fill up the survey and we have also uh, ongoing talks on uh, from my side and we can see how uh, you can possibly join us and, and be a beneficiary of that as well so that that's for you john mm, great yeah could you let me uh share my screen so that i can walk the parents through this form and to explain to them uh why we are doing it yeah so you let me share screen okay sure. thanks Go ahead. thank you okay uh, Okay, parents, uh, I'm so glad that you are with us in, in this uh, Facebook Live. And the reason why David and myself are doing this is because both of us believe that to be better parents, we need to upgrade our knowledge and skill sets and also mindsets. Yeah, so I don't get anything out of this. Yeah, so uh, just I just want to bring uh, educators as well as helping professionals uh, who really work from the heart to share the knowledge with us and one of them is definitely David yeah as you can sense from his sharing so much experience yeah so uh, I pasted the link inside the comments box and the intention of getting more info from you is to help you to please help David to understand uh, where you're coming from yeah because in such practice it will be more ideal to start off from where you are rather than uh, throwing a bunch of theories and our experiences on you and hoping that it works in your life yeah but that doesn't work it should be knowing where you are and working from where you are to get to where you want okay so um at the same time david can you share with us more about um i see something very interesting here you are also holding sharings uh, on the last Thursday of every month. Can you share with us more on this as well? Yeah, so uh, pardon the uh, titling. So we, uh, we, we often struggle with uh, coming up with titles. We are very good at uh, crafting content, but we were thinking mm. uh, of this title called Parenting, Does It Spark Joy? But then we realized that the answer <laughs> may not be very helpful. <laughs> then it ends up throwing the child away, right? So we hope to equip you because we realize that parents are very focused on the child, but often they, they find that they are in the end what we call the starving baker right they make food for the kids but they forget to eat as well mm -hmm. and we want them we want parents especially for you if you are giving so much and you're helping your children we want to support you in any way we can so we talk about here emotionally resilient parents how to achieve positive outcomes understand your own emotions understand how to manage them understand how to what to deal with them um, Parent-child relate smarter, not harder. This is the second part actually of uh, what I've shared today. Today we talked about pace. This one is on priorities. Helping tools to relate because there's a different operating system if you're task-oriented and you're people-oriented, for example. Mm. And then what the hell talks about um, our different aspects of wholeness. We talk about uh, care, self-care, mental care, hy mental hygiene. We talk about different things uh, that will help us with uh, ourselves not just one two aspects but generally and overall so that we can become uh, people who are excellent at self-care that's the main thing mm. yeah and then becoming an agile and innovative parent how to solve problems better 
uh, are there different mindsets we can adopt and are there some practical skills that we can have in order to uh, uh, deal with uh, the challenges that come along the way and, and you know, rather, rather than get frustrated for example we are able to a, think of different ways to um, deal with life's issues and then finally it's a very inter interesting topic because we realize that parents really need support and how then do we build a network around us we call mm. it social co-parenting right if mm. i were to say it another way it takes a village to raise a child mm. how do you build that village i i had the opportunity to be raised by a village mm. i had a lot of extended family members who basically were not shy to correct me train me encourage me and all that and i when I said thank you village to my uh, to my village literally at uh, my wedding right they, they all cried because they know uh, they know they put in effort uh, and I'm thankful for that so this parenting approach a community approach talks about how we can actually build that support for us so that we don't feel so shy huh? <laughs> we are able to you know uh, uh, rely on other people here and there at times and tap on each other's expertise I mean we are not experts in everything so we need help mm. Yeah, and how do we then build that that ecosystem? And how do we involve other people and invite other people to parent? Because sometimes maybe you're thinking, I don't know how to get my in-laws involved. I don't know how to speak to my unc uh, my other sibling and tell them not to do that when my kids are around, like you know. So there's all these things going around, but how do mm -hmm. we then approach it? What's a good way? So we thought these are some relevant topics for the season. If you find them relevant and it's helpful for you, do join us. Yeah. Wonderful, and you can get access to it by scanning the QR codes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes, uh, I'm so glad that you're doing this because uh, in such times when almost every one of us has access to to the, the social media, we can definitely extend our network beyond our relatives as well as friends. And um, I, it reminded me of a story uh, this morning that a mommy in our Facebook group actually commented that she felt lonely and she felt so drained and somehow I can relate to it because a lot of times we thought that we are the only one in the world uh, who is experiencing the sadness and the toy on our shoulder and the loads of parenting our kids but again if you look around you there are many other parents with children of yours of um of the same age as well and you're definitely not alone and definitely if you are looking for more resources you can go to david's uh, support network and i think here he has listed out so much content i mean i can i can literally run like um, a few months of talk just inviting david david to, to come back okay i will chop you all the way until december okay <laughs> hey just nice right uh july august september november december it's like October. <laughs> it will end in November, but uh, uh, there's a reason why we kind of structured it this way, la, because yeah. uh, my first baby is coming. <laughs> wow, <laughs> congratulations. Give me a father soon. Yay. Yeah. yeah. When, so, when, sorry, so when? Huh? Wow, you're not parent and you, you are talking to us about this because of the experiences we have with children uh, yes, over yes. the years. And we find that this is some of the things we've compiled together. Yeah. When's your baby due? Uh, 9th of May, uh, sorry, 9th of September. Oh, okay, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Do you know the gender already? Yeah, baby girl. Ah, okay, okay, One, wonderful. Yeah, so you're going to have a princess on with yes. your house. <laughs> Great. Okay, thanks so much, David, for sharing. And I know that there's so much content because I myself, uh, in fact, uh, to the parents who are listening, I'm listening to what they, the David has shared earlier not as uh not as an educator i'm writing down notes to see what i can do as a parent yeah so um david oh so much content that you have shared so what is one uh tip that you think parents can use it right now to improve their relationship with their children i think one thing perhaps is to check with the, the child on how they are feeling and what mm -hmm. are their need so you take a approach of like hey i observe my child and i see if my child has uh, is fast paced or slow pace sometimes the child is both mm -hmm. sometimes and so what's the current need is the need to understand is it the need to make sense is it a need for guidance is it a need for a cry for help is it a need for freedom 
a need to do their own thing, a need for variety, what is the need? So to check back with the child. So as you have that conversation, whether or not you actually remember everything today is inconsequential in that sense because the best person who knows themselves is your child and yourself. Mm. So as you go through that conversation, you gain the understanding, you gain the awareness that there's a pattern. The pattern may not fit fully into what I just shared. Ultimately, we're not boxing the child up. We're not saying that you are fast-paced. Mm. So we don't know. As different situations, it may change. Right? I'm generally slow-paced, actually. But at certain points of time, I'm fast-paced. When it comes to business, I'm very fast-paced. But when it comes to certain decisions, I slow down like crazy and I take forever to decide. And my wife screams at me. So like, can you be faster or not? Oh. So... And when I scream at my wife or the microwave oven early on in marriage, right, we laugh at it now because we realize that this is a pace issue. Mm. Let's, come to, let's come to a decision as we talk about why do you need to be so slow? Because we're spending a lot of money on this. We want to be careful. So let's come up with some criteria. Lah. So as we discuss, we find a way to pace together. And when we pace together, then that's fine. We're dancing without stepping on each other's shoes. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and what I like about what you shared is uh, you have such an uh an open com with open relationship with your wife such that you are like knowing each other's needs and wants very very clearly. Yes, okay, so yeah. sorry again. We're glad. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, so yeah, we are yeah. recipients of that as well. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, I still have one last question, and this is a question that I didn't prepare you earlier, and it's a question that I ask all my guests. Uh. Yeah, so right now with two months away from PSLE and the children are getting anxious and now in your own world, uh, you are successful in your own rights and also knowing all the wonderful skills in parenting. So let's say if I now invite David to walk down the memory lane and you go to back to, the, to your younger self, the 12 year old David and you can see him, you can almost touch him and he's so close to you and looking at you right into the eyes. Yeah. So what will you tell him? Wow. So assuming everything still flows like right. So a uh, future self talking to younger younger self, correct? It doesn't matter. Yeah. So when you first <laughs> see him, I've experienced David, Okay. Yes, what we will you tell him? I will tell him you will fail. And you will fail horribly in many things, but you need to fail in order to be successful. And in your failing, don't forget to learn. You need to fail forward. You need to realize that people do love you. You need to realize that people will give you that permission as long as you also show sincerity to change and to grow and learn along the way. So don't worry about the failures. Worry about learning from the failures and learn and remember to keep your support close by. So that's why I would tell my, my younger self. <laughs> Wonderful. And and it sounds to me like you have the, the, the whole of Air Force uh, on your back. Yeah, sorry, I stay in Singkang. So welcome it's to my okay. home. And it's okay. It's a very well protected place. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to add before we wrap it up? Just want to uh, give a shout out to those maybe who are ho doing homeschooling. Salute. I think it's like there's there's no diff, right? <laughs> so you're still learning from home. <laughs> but uh, the challenges are still there and very great. And you can't really uh, have a lot of time out with other parents to get that emotional support and that social support. I think just a shout out to you. Thank you for doing that. I know that it's not easy. I know parents mm. who do that and it's crazy. But it's something that your child will thank you for much later in life. So for those of you parents who are putting in the effort as well to join us, to learn and all that, uh, you are doing your child a great big favor. If your child doesn't say anything, it doesn't matter. Just know that you are doing something that will benefit your child and they are leaving behind a legacy. They will realize it later. But what you're doing is important and it's very precious to have you here and to, to, to be able to uh, speak to you on this. Thank you so much and thank you john for having me on uh, it's been a pleasure and such a wonderful time thanks so much for your time as well uh, so don't go off yet uh, parents uh, if you think that you have any uh, current challenge and you think that baby is someone that 
you feel that you can talk to and you trust, uh, they can contact you through the Google form as well, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So parents, thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you again tonight uh, for another Facebook Live. Yeah, we're we'll doing an, another one tonight at 7.30. So in the meantime, have a good lunch and take care. Bye-bye.